Hey folks, welcome to the Landscape YouTube channel. We are at Equip 2023, and uh, this video is going to be about mini skid steers and the mini brands out there, and we're going to do a run through of a bunch of them. This will be a fun video. Here we go. We're here in a Dish Witch booth. We're going to see a bunch of different brands today, and we're going to talk about things I like about them, don't like about each one. Th these are pieces of equipment, mini skid steers, whatever brand, I don't care. If you're in landscaping and you've got an established company, this is a thing you need to be really thinking seriously about acquiring. Uh, renting on every job you need it. Purchasing as soon as you can afford to and as soon as it makes sense for your business mix. Um, the Ditchwich models keep going up in size. We'll show you a couple here and then we're going on to Case and New Holland and a bunch of others. So here we go. Uh, things I love about like a small size machine, like this is an 800. So most of these categories are like uh, going to be based off the weight uh, capacity of the machine. So this is like an 800. So it's going to be 800 based, give or take uh, on the poundage there. you got to go into each model's specifics of like what their tip uh, tolerances are and all that kind of stuff. I really love the ditch witches for simplistic controls. You're able to, uh, a good hand placement, even for my big hands or maybe small hands like Brittany's, uh, you can get in there and really feather and move things. The uh, hydraulic attachment or the hy auxiliary hydraulic running here has a floor uh, foot control. So once you engage it, you can hold it in place with your foot. I really like that. Um, I like the actual manual R1550 ditch, which is a digital switch. I don't like that, um, but that manual uh, uh, shifter knob there. Essentially, I do I do like that. Only thing I can I really say, and our 1550 has this, is this uh, finger to, this toggle switch uh, parking brake. I do not like these. I wish I wish it was a more manual switch or just a, a, a better switch because I really feel like this thing's gonna get smashed off one of these days. And you got to get that little switch. I still never know how to run this, how to get that to actually engage or disengage. I I do not like that switch. So. Other than that, operator platform is real handy. It's not too terribly tall. Some of these models, it's so high up in the air. It's a, if you're on an office thing all day, which is what's so great about a mini skid steer, this hike coming up, it gets old, believe it or not. But um, uh, your, your hydro fluid, your diesel fuel tank, uh, pretty well protected, smooth corners, smooth edges, nice open operating platform, and handles that are easily uh, placed there to, to, for good controls. Really like that. Let's look at the 1750. And then we're on to whatever the next one is. 1750s out, replacing the 1550. We had a 1550. We have a 1550, as you folks have seen. Um, I'm not sure where this stops because they keep going up in size. The 1550 I thought was perfect, uh, but they're running up into the 1750 now. Not a lot has changed on this. The, one thing they have done is still the operator platform still pretty low, and I like that a lot. Again, just not hiking up on that thing all day long. Then they've got the behemoth over here, the 3000, which is absolutely absurd it's a full-size skids i mean it's I, I don't know what this is equivalent to but again three thousand pounds lifting capacity rated or it could pick up this entire straw bale hunter literally 40 pound straw bale it can pick that up so that's super impressive whatever monster engine super complex emission stuff nobody likes but here we are um why in the world such a big skid here i don't know this thing is so big i actually don't know who it's so big I, I couldn't imagine actually using this thing on most of our sites. I don't know. Um, but he was saying that they're aiming at the workplace safety uh, oriented factors of like in and out of a skid steer is where a, a huge percentage of um, like on site accidents happen and injuries. So with an easy uh, mount system like that, we're going to walk onto the back of it. They're saying that's going to help you reduce workers comp charges. So that's really interesting to me. I, I, um, and again, that's big commercial job sites. I imagine that's more of an issue for us landscapers, hardscapers. Um, you know, the main thing is just speed and efficiency. That's why that 1750 and 1550 are really like I consider the ideal models. So we'll get on over and check out some other ones here. So unbeknownst to me, Skag has been putting together one of these. And uh, there's some things about this model I really like. It's a 1,000 pound model is what I'm told. It's not labeled anywhere, but the Skag Jackal is what they're calling it. One of the things, if you remember, I saw it look like that hike up. I don't, I don't love that. It's so freaking high. I don't mind that it's spring loaded. That makes it a little nicer for operators. Um, back end's a little crude, and it's, it doesn't really matter. I, I, but I do not like something I actually don't like is just that sharp kind of knife blade concept. So, were you to get pinched against something, like I, I don't love that. Just that sharp edge stuff. That, that kind of concerns me. What I, what I do really like, though, things I really like, mechanical parking brake. That's cool. It's a little flippy, flicky switch on the ditch switch. Don't love that. Uh, I do like these controls. I love these handles around here. So you can really plant your hand on here and operate and move. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I love our joystick controls on our T595 Bobcat. 
I don't know about on, on the mini skids. I just, frankly, we, we don't have those. Um, so that's kind of weird to me. The auxiliary controls, simple, clean. I like it. Uh, bucket dump again. That handrail is a big deal. So you can plant your hand on here. And still, when this thing's shaking around and jumping all over the place, even my big hands and maybe Britt's little hands, you can still plant on here and have some stability. Uh, I like this bar here. It's ugly, but it's still, you know, it's still extra something to grab onto. A mechanical throttle. I do like that. The screen, it's got a float control or a boom control thing. I'm not sure. This is your hydro flow, I'm guessing. Don't know enough about that. Shame on me. Uh, a couple things I do like. Also, the view's pretty good down off here. Sloped hood, all that stuff. This color of the boom is super cool looking. I do like that. That will get destroyed off there. I, I don't love that that's... Uh, I don't love that that's uh, exposed, but uh, what I do like too, by the way, Skag, American owned, American made. That's super cool. I feel like that's somewhat vulnerable there, but I might be might be mistaken on that. Um, but other than that, your standard uh, mini skid steer mount, great machine. Price point sounds like uh, between forty and fifty on that for a thousand pound machine. I don't think that's a terrible value. So um, overall, I think it looks like a good machine and a Kubota engine, and you can't go wrong there. All right, on to uh, what New Holland. Okay. I didn't again didn't know New Holland's got their own version of this out and uh, New Holland yellow. Um, I mean, it's tough to like revolutionize the layout and size of these things. So all that part's pretty simple. Looks like your standard uh, boom. That thing's kind of like unsexy and whatever the, the hitch is there, but it doesn't matter. Whatever. Um, the things, the parts that matter to me, ergonomics and lift capacity. 314, I have no clue what this thing is lift capacity wise. Is it a 14? I don't know. Well, maybe we can get a, a rep. They've ignored us the whole three, four times I've been over here, so who knows? Um, the only one thing I see right out the gate I don't like grease zerks. So now we got maintenance. That is one thing I love about our ditch witch is there are no grease points. It's all wearable bushings, which in our 750s, 2000 hours of operation. We've only had the bushings wear out right in the bucket hinge pin. So those things wear out all the time. I say all the time. That's the only thing it has worn out. Um, we've replaced them at maybe 1,500 hours or something. And that is going to be, you know, based greatly off of how you abuse the machine, right? So that, that's one thing there. But monthly or daily, weekly maintenance, however much you're using this thing, I don't want to be greasing this thing. I really do love that about the, um, the ditch witches is those bushings. You don't have to grease. I think that's super cool. Uh, what's that? On what? I have never had that as an issue. No kidding. How many? Yeah, right. And that's okay too. How many hours are on it when you're getting noise? No kidding. Interesting. What are you greasing with? Uh, undercarriage and regular, uh, regular general grease. For un for what? The undercarriage? I said just what do I grease them with? Yeah. I have it. I got. I would have to modify it. And drill some holes. Yeah. The grease fittings and grease suits. Yeah, interesting. It's, it's terrible not having a grease fitting from the factory. Interesting. Every moving joints have a grease fitting. Yeah, interesting. Okay, yeah. cool. Thanks for that input. Good I appreciate luck. it. Um, in uh, the 2,000 hours we have on our 750, we've never had that as an issue. Um, that's actually the first complaint I've ever heard of that. Don't know. Everybody's got different situations and scenarios. Interesting. I'll still take the no, no grease search. The controls here, I like these. These are these are interesting. I don't love them, but I do like that concept uh, for, I'm guessing, flow control for your hydraulics. Some simple switches here. I do like that. That's cool. On, off, all that kind of stuff. That part's simple. Um, other than that, backside, I feel that will get destroyed, I feel like, by getting buck, bucked against something or whatever, but maybe not. I don't know. Otherwise, simple machine. I like it. Big counterweights. We'll ask a rep here and see if we can figure out what the, the lift capacity of this thing is. Because they pretty much ignore you apparently every time you're here. But other than that, simple machine, looks good. Don't know what diesel engine's in this thing. It's blue, it looks like a Kubota, but I don't know that it is. So, all right, whatever. Interesting, cool. All right, Hunter, there we go. Uh, here we are in the KRT booth, um, a brand I'm not super familiar with, but I've been seeing them around. Know a couple people with these models. Um, let's see, going out, Kubota engine in them. I like that, that's super cool. I think a more economy based uh, concept here and uh whatever good visibility looks like the controls they got a monster joist dude you're, you're totally good you're totally good you're totally good okay cool thank you sir um you've seen this in all the videos i don't love that height that, like that's freaking nuts actually that's so high 
Um, but the benefit to that is, and I know why they do that that way, but the benefit is like you have an, an incredible view down now, right? So just kind of think about that when you're looking at different models and stuff. Um, your boom control, I love, again, all these handles around here to, again, so you can stabilize yourself or ride on there. That's smooth, feels good. Your controls are pretty obvious. Uh, auxiliary is pretty similar, but man, that is so high up. Golly, that's crazy. Um, you got visibility for all your fluids, pretty cool stuff. They've got track units, wheeled units. Uh, let's look around here. Yeah, that joystick there is pretty wild. That's that's really something. This looks like pretty comparable to like our 750 machine. 900 volts, a thousand pound lift. So, um, other than that, pretty simple machines. Maybe worth considering. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we found it. Turns out they didn't have it outside. Well, they had one outside, but they had one inside too. Uh, right out the gate, I do love that. That's cool. Uh, I hope that's like bulletproof because that does get hit and smashed and knocked into stuff. But I do I do like that. That's handy. Um, I'd forgotten case case New Holland CNH. So that's why it looks so much like the New Holland. I know it's not right out the gate with the boom, but uh, open compartment, all that stuff looks good. It's simple, it really is, so far as I can tell, Hunter, the same freaking machine, right? One thing we didn't do on the New Holland, let's see if we can peek in here, see what's all, ooh, shiny stuff and hoses. Um, so whatever all that stuff is in there, makes it go. That's what we do. Still don't love that. Oh, I do like that, that's cool. Phone holder, that's smart, good call case. But uh, otherwise, oh, we got a horn, because of the horn. I'm down with that. Uh, but yeah, other than that, good compact little machine, TL100 to a 1,000 pound lift capacity machine. It is slim profile. I do like that. That's cool. Not a bunch of stuff randomly jutting out here and there. So that's a good call. I'm with that. Cool. Uh, Dixie chopper machine. Um, I had no idea they made these. I don't love that. That will get smashed off there. I feel like, excuse me. Um, but a super simple and compact machine. These are doomed. Uh, I, I don't love that, but simple controls, hopefully at a great economical price point. I do love, again, because I'm an old man, people, but I love, that's a low step, so I like that. And it's pretty spring-loaded. That's maybe, hopefully, fairly comfortable. Controls are super, super simple. Um, not sure what the switches do, but, oh, oh, wow, that's cool. Okay, so these, excuse me, these tracks will uh, expand in and out, so for narrower passage through gates and stuff. I like that. Um, throttle, manual throttle, I like that. Operator platform is not awesome, but this will be hand shoveling any day. So um, other than that, that's it. So yeah, but yeah, simple machine, not, not a lot of bells and whistles to it, but hopefully that reflects in the price, right? Makes it a more economic model. So over here next door, also wild stuff, the Kangas, let's go Hunter. These things are wild. Um, Real again, real simple units, single lift hydraulic tired units. So, I, I never have interest in uh, tired units at all. They do have over there, I guess, a an, what they call OTT over the track um, track system or whatever. So, they got that going on. But, tires off road anytime from uh, what August to uh, July dicey once you get out in the grass so anything with wheels on it i'm not going to be interested in but uh you get some tracks on there and it's game it's game time vermeer another american-owned company american manufacturing company i do love that about vermeer absolutely uh also sponsors together in a trade big thank you to vermeer um quality equipment you cannot go wrong with vermeer that's that simple things i love about vermeer is again that durability american made all that stuff um i don't love all this stuff exposed out here it makes me nervous um, that's, that's one thing I don't love about the Vermeer stuff. You're getting grease zerks. I don't love that from a maintenance standpoint, but again, Vermeer stuff, you know, it's well built, not an issue. The step back here is a little high. You know, I'm an old man and griping about that. Control simple, open operation is very simple and open. Uh, don't know exactly. I guess that's your PTO or your auxiliary hydraulics. I do love again, manual or uh, fly by wire or cable throttle. Derek, what's up? Going on. We're here uh, shooting YouTube videos about all the mini skits here, so that's what we're doing here. But um, yeah, so other than that, simple controls. Again, able to keep your hands on the controls. I really think that's important. Some kind of bar like this, so that you can stay planted on the sink so that will buck and rock, especially if you get into some weird, um, weird cases. I don't love the steel again, like some of the other models. I wish this was just more enclosed. But again, the visibility. The trade-off is the visibility is really good. So I get again that concept. Uh, let's see here. There's a big wire harness thing back here. No, I don't know what that is. 
Oh, that's the ignition? Okay. Well, there we go, Hunter. That's the ignition. I'm trying to cover a lot of machines in a short amount of time. It gets kind of crazy. Uh, cup holder, that's always important. Um, other than that, good machine, good quality stuff. I feel like these are really exposed to get hit and smashed, but it is cool that it's, they've got a high flow and a standard flow, which um, you see that a lot on these Vermeer models, which I, I could be, um, you know, I, I think that's an awesome thing. So that's Vermeer's. There we go. Hey, we're here at the Cormiti booth, and I think this is an Italian machine. I don't know for certain, but um, I see this a lot. I haven't really given them a lot of uh, look at the uh, time of day. The stand, standard mount uh, for your buckets and attachments. I love that. Sight glass on the side. I do like that. Super open cab. The Again, the step, not super high, not too bad. Controls are pretty intense. Got a lot going on here. Your standard uh, traction controls. Your high flow lever, standard flow. Uh, controlling a bunch of hydraulic takeoff stuff. So some simple switches here for your float control. I like that. Simple gauges. Pretty simple machine. I like, again, that throttle concept. Uh, parking brake is at least a simple on-off switch, not that little thing that I don't like about the ditch witch. Uh, just a simple switcher. I do like that. Uh, cool color. I'll give it that. And these, these crazy counterweights, they look freaking plastic, but I assure you they are not. Um, I do love that sight glass. It's super easy for people to keep an eye on uh, your hydraulic fuel, uh, hydraulic fluid levels. I really do like that. Um, other than that, I don't know. And then this thing is just plain wild. Uh, no more short batch fees, no more short load fees. When you can apparently make and mix your own mortar on site, um, your own concrete, whatever, with this small batch, micro batch machine. Uh, this thing is probably a small fortune, but... If you do a lot of mortar work or even concrete to where you're in, in sites that are tough to access or, or whatever the case is, I love this. I think this is the coolest thing ever. Can you imagine my boys, Zeke and Levi, what they'd think of like having their own concrete truck on site? Wouldn't that be cool? Buggies, uh, skitzer loaders. One other thing real quick since we're here, kind of a digression, but it's up. I'm try, Hunter's a pro. We're moving slow. trying to. But uh, this thing to reach up and dump into dump trucks and dump trailers and stuff, a uh, wild concept, uh, which, again, actually – that is one problem when you're running like mini skids here to a buggy. Um, you got to dump it in the front you know, yard or the front street and then scoop it back up into a dump truck. In theory, this is dumping right into uh, you know, the side of a dump trailer or dump truck. So I like that concept. That's that's interesting. So cool. All right. Let's uh, we're going to Bobcat next. Here we go. OK, hey, we're at Bobcat. 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 That's one place that voice also originated aside from Brittany Nicole and the kid contractor podcast which i am running out of voice we're gonna try to pound through this <clears throat> mt100 bobcat of course uh, american made american owned so far uh deuce and owns them now uh, yeah, i don't know how that goes yet um so good machine of course you can't go wrong there right uh on this mt100 i don't love and again you can get wide track narrow track models i never recommend getting narrow track models if you're in landscaping you need that wide track for flotation so you tear up the yards less things are smoother uh, just totally ready to go. That is a really narrow track. That's pretty wild. Uh, we want to see wide tracks on all the machines for that flotation. Uh, other than that, simple machine. Um, again, I'm, I'm talking about this with everybody. This one's not terrible. Some of them are higher than others, whatever. It seems like, I don't think that's the auxiliary. I think that's actually a safety pedal. Um, but there are cases made, I'm guessing you've got to be on that to operate it. There's a case to be made for that for safety. I, I don't really argue with that. I love, um, we've got a manual parking brake. That's cool. I'm down with that. That's nice. Um, these controls, this is a little bit of a stretch here. Even for my big hands, I got to kind of reach a little far to run the bucket. So that's, you know, that could be a little more compact. Uh, our, our auxiliary hydraulics, okay. We got a float uh, option there, or maybe that's the boom leveling. Uh, our gauges, I do like gauges. Super simple, open, awesome. Love that. Again, this control, super simple. A little bit of a reach up here. You know, you got to kind of, you know, move clear around if you're going to go forward. So don't necessarily love that throttle. I do love this throttle position. That's cool. So you can just slam that thing up and get going, right? So that part's super cool. Beverage holder, phone holder. That's definitely cool. I like that. I'm guessing that's a phone holder. Would you say, Hunter? He shakes his head yes. Um, other than that, bar for gripping on the, um, what do they call it, a no crud handle, right? Um, other than that, simple machine, hydraulics up there. Um I mean, you can't go wrong with Bobcat. MT-100, they really need to come up with, like, an MT-150. I think everybody has to compete with the Ditch Witch 1550. That's the model we have. Uh, that thing will handle 
full size, full pallets of pavers. He doesn't handle, manhandle them, but it gets them around job sites. And for us, that was a big deal. That being said, uh, simple machine can't go wrong. Um, so I know people have MT100s, absolutely love them. I would love to see like an MT150 to be more competitive with the, uh, the ditch witch uh, for lift capacity because with these models, you're still down stacking pavers and pallets, and that sucks. You don't want to be doing that. Um, but again, I've been there. I've done it for years. you got to buy the best machine you can afford at the time. Um, in closing, Brittany, do you have any thoughts on mini skid steers? What's important to you? Brittany, I'm in, everybody. Um, mini skid steers? Do you like mini Put your hands on these controls. I'm curious what your hand. Let's do hand comparison. So, like, yeah, my hands are huge. So, they're, what did somebody say on uh, YouTube comment one time? My hands are freakishly, freakishly large. I couldn't drive them. Yeah. Not, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could. I just couldn't use this. You don't like those because the hands, you can't No, like, I can't use these. Unfortunately, but interesting. The ditch witch I can use pretty well. Right. But it's kind of like the Toro buggy that we have. I can't use those controls very well yeah, either. But they're spread out real big, yeah. women are few and far between in the industry. Well, so. but still a lot. I mean, because of the nature of the industry, a lot of smaller people work in the industry. A lot of yeah. You know, Hispanic I, 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 community, yeah, I guess. a lot of shorter stature people, like, you know, they're not going to have big, giant, dumb hands like me. And so that is still across the board something to consider. So, um, you know, whatever. Ultimately, still beats still be tan still be no, tan shoveling we were, whatever. we were on the skag one of these yesterday and the padding on that one was a lot nicer than right this one. so i didn't realize that was a thing until i sat on that or until i stood against that one interesting so i guess that's it i don't know okay cool. i really like our ditch witch one. yeah the ditch witch really is really is a nice model this again grease zerks and like i said you're never going to please everybody the one guy came in saying you know Anything without grease zerks sucks. I don't want grease zerks because I don't want guys having to deal with that maintenance and me getting on the guys about maintenance for greasing. Uh, folks, I think that's all the mini skid steers in the building that we know of. I hope that helps you somehow get an idea of what is important to us when we're buying mini skid steers. And I just really want to stress how important it is to mechanize and not work your team hard so they don't dread the next day of work. Uh, when they're 40, they're not decrepit from, you know, lifting heavy stuff all the time. Uh, buy the machines to take those loads off of your, your team's backs, and they're going to be more loyal to you. They're going to work actually longer days and harder when they're not just getting gassed out doing stuff manually. I can't say enough about that. So that's it. Almond Landscape, we're out. See you.